Hi, this is Ariel. Bonjour. Welcome to my channel where we make fun costumes and weird stuff. I have been invited to Barcelona as a guest judge for the WCS uh, costume competition. So I need a look that is warm and comfortable to go there. So which character is always classy and wears warm clothes? Cruella de Ville, of course, with all of her exotic furs. I have always loved this character so much in every movie that I've seen. Yes, all of them. And also my other muse is uh, Fran Fine in The Nanny. She has so many iconic looks. It's like a fashion runway all the time, but more colorful and fun. I want to make all of them. And she has plenty of animal prints outfits. So with these inspirations in mind, let's turn some puppies into clothes. Uh, this was a joke. I don't kill dogs. This is all fake fur, okay? Okay. <laughs> a few years back, I had made this dress. Inspired by the movie with uh, Glenn Close. I think it's pretty good, but it had some damage on the arm. The fabric has ripped in a few places. So I want to wear this as a base and have a jacket on top of it or a coat. I have these shoes, which I absolutely love, but I think for the character, it would look very good if she had some boots. So I think I'm going to make some boot covers, but the Dalmatian print. <laughs> and I had also made this bag. <laughs> with a red lining. It was a white faux fur and I added these little patches in black fur as well. I really love this, so I think I'm going to make something cool. I have this fabric, which I got on sale a few years back. It was 20 euros for all these three meters. It is faux fur, but it's very short, so I think it's going to be easy to use, I hope. And also I have some scraps of these two synthetic furs as well. So maybe if I make a big coat, I can have accents in this fur or maybe the inside so it will be very comfortable and warm because the temperature is getting low. Let's make this work. Okay, so I don't really know what to do with the coat, so I will start with the boots. Using my never-ending pile of bedsheet scraps to make a mock-up. I'm just draping it around my leg while wearing the shoes that I need. That way it should fit the shape of my foot better. I'm wearing one of those uh, super warm fleece leggings, which is very practical to pin your fabric to. <laughs> I will make this in four pieces with a seam at the front, back and sides with an overlap on one side. That way I can add some buttons to put them on. With the shapes flat on my table, I can first adjust the lines a little bit with my ruler and transfer it to paper using my roulette. roulette. I have four pieces, so let's make a quick mock-up, which might end up being the lining of the fabric if it goes well. I'm just adding a one centimeter all around as the seam allowance. Remember my fleece folding pants? Well, it appears that they are very practical if you want to work on your leg without having to be cold. I'm pretty happy with the fit. Uh, I don't want it to be too tight because the thing should look a little bit more like a boot, hopefully. But I still made a few adjustments on the feet part. I will add an elastic that goes under the shoe and, well, they will be basically uh, chaps. Is that, is that what it's called? Yeah. Time to kill some puppies! I absolutely love this fabric, I think the print is so much fun. And even if it hurts my eyes a little bit to work with this, I think it makes the sewing process a little bit more interesting. This fabric is not too difficult to use because it is very short fur. It does behave a little bit like velvet, but not too much, so it's fine. I sewed the four pieces together and then I add a top stitching. Stop, 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 stop stitching. It adds a little detail and also makes it stronger, but also stiffer. So it hopefully will stay up like a boot. I don't want to have to add some boning into this. My white bedsheet mock-up will be perfect as lining. To finish the edge, I want to add a little more detail. And I think this 
will be perfect because it is almost the same texture as the shoe so it might make the whole thing more coherent. Don't ask me why I have this fabric. It is a four-way stretch so it's very easy to use. I'm just cutting strips to use as bias binding. So I sew it once on the non-sticky side of this fabric. Then I fold it and clip it with those little clips because the pins, they tend to leave a mark on this fabric. So I want to avoid that. And let me tell you, I struggle with this fabric because it is very sticky. So it tends to get stuck on itself and also on all the metal parts of my sewing machine. So I tried to sew it between two sheets of non-stick paper but it meant that I couldn't really see where I was sewing, so it was all wonky. And I don't have a special non-sticky machine foot, which apparently does exist. So I just finished that edge by hand. It's annoying, but it looks cool, so. And also this fabric does this, so what more can I say? I did that on all three visible sides of the shoe cover. Still, I had to use the non-sticky paper just on the corner where the fabric is uh, overlapping. I think it looks pretty cool, but I have a little bit of this velvet trim. I probably unpicked it from somewhere, but I don't remember where. There should be enough to add a, a line at the center of this one. It's not very visible, but it will add some texture and also make it more fancy, I think. I hope. We'll see. Again, a little bit of non-stick paper under it, so it will go in the sewing machine smoothly. And that finishes the boots. I also added the buttons on the side, but I forgot to film it because I was kind of in a rush. Sorry. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. What is Skillshare, you ask? Well, it's an online community of creators. They have thousands of courses in pretty much anything you can think of. Whether it's music, graphic design, business, marketing, linguistics, painting, gardening. If there is something you would like to teach yourself, it's there. I am currently following this mobile photography shoot and edit surreal photos with your phone by Amelie Stadger. I'm doing all of her courses. But there are so many subjects to choose from. They are comprehensive, in-depth courses on a subject. It's not really like a YouTube video, it really feels like a class. There are millions of users and you can join and connect with other people who are doing the same subject and you can get feedback on your project. The best thing is that it's ad-free and also you can get the whole catalog of all the classes with subtitles in German, in Portuguese, in Spanish and in French. Baguette! So if you are interested in joining Skillshare, you can click the link in the description below and the first 1,000 who join will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you for sponsoring this channel. And now, back to the video. Now we need to make a jacket. I make all my patterns myself. That is why this pattern was made on the back of a frozen poster. I put the leftover fabric on the floor to see how much I have and how long I can make this coat. I don't really like how the pieces look, so I made a few alterations. And I didn't really like it either, so I just thought of draping something new. Which was all for nothing! My secret plan for this coat was to have it being very flowy and being lined with the faux fur, so it will be very warm and I can wear it in winter. I don't have enough of all this to line the entire coat. Unfortunately, because it is so soft. I don't really want to create a new pattern and I will make instead a jacket because I already have made a pattern for this. I made this pattern 10 years ago, so let's hope it still fits. <laughs> giving a good press to the fabric because I don't want this to shrink on me after I made a whole jacket with it. And with the energy prices going up, we are not hitting the house too much, so ironing is much more pleasant now. Ideally, I wanted this coat to be floor length, but I don't have enough fabric for that, so I'm adding as much as I can with the fabric I have left. I'm cutting the collar piece on this super soft uh, red fur, which is extremely annoying to work with because you have little bits of fur everywhere. A vacuum is very practical in this situation. Another bed sheet will be used as the lining. It will be cotton, so very comfortable. I'm using the already cut pieces instead of the pattern because I have 
added a bit to each of them. Don't forget the little pocket. And now it's just a matter of assembling all of this. <laughs> okay, let's do this. First, pocket flap. And the layer is red. You just need to attach them together, clip the corners and the curved area, flip it, press it, done. Now the flap is attached to the side front with one side of the inside pocket. The second side of the pocket is attached on the front piece. Clip the corner and fold. See how those pieces combine? So side front connected to front. And then you can close the inside of the pocket. Ta-da! A very cool functioning pocket. Now the two back pieces and side back. They are all pinned and sewn. And then I can connect the front and the back with the shoulder seam. Because I need this to be done before I can add the collar. We don't need the side seam yet. Clipping the curved area again and every seam gets a good press. This is an easy and very important step. It will make your work go from amateur to semi-pro in an instant. This thing is a tailoring hem. It is just a round thing that is filled with the mock-up scraps, so it's kind of hard. It can take the heat and it's very good to press all the curved area, like here with the breast part. This is the neck hole and I'm attaching the under collar piece. The little points on the collar are a bit tricky to get. It's to notch the corners before doing any seams. And also there is a little dart under the collar. I know jacket collars are a bit tricky to get. This dart is very helpful to keep the shape of your collar. I don't know if it's very understandable on these images. It is definitely not an intuitive placement for a dart. Anyways, now we need to work on the fluffy part of this collar, which is the red fur. Again, it's, uh, it's fake. Huh? I place the front and back side of the collar together and I mark all the little corners where I should clip later. And then this piece could be attached to the main part of the coat all along the neckline. I just want to say that I really like this combination of color and textures, but also I think they look very good and interesting on camera, so it's even more interesting for me to edit. I'm editing now, so I just wanted to say that. <laughs> I closed the side seam and we are done with the main body, so now let's attach the sleeves. They are two-piece sleeves, so they can be curved like the natural position of your elbow, and they have little slits at the wrist, so I start with that. Now we pin them together and sew them. I have a ton of notches on this pattern, so it makes the assembly a lot quicker. Never forget the power of notches. The seams are iron flat. And now we have arms, which is uh, practical. The sleeve cap and the armhole of the body need to be assembled together, but they are not exactly the same length because the sleeve is slightly bigger, so it adds a little volume right on the shoulder. You gather it almost like you would make frills, but you don't want any of those tiny pleats. It is a bit tricky, but it does make your sleeve cap look a little better. It is a jacket, so let's add shoulder pads. I stole this from another garment, but I don't remember which one. <laughs> they just need to be attached by hand in a few points so they don't run away, but it doesn't have to be very, very strong. You want these to be able to move a little bit inside the lining. We are onto the finishing touches. This strip of fabric is for the slit at the back of the coat, so I have room to move my legs. And it is secured with those tiny stitches. I assembled the lining pieces together, then I put the coat on a mannequin inside out and I can pin my lining where I want it to be. Then I spent half a day hand sewing this lining and the sleeve lining and the buttons. I wished I had one more day to make it look very professional, but I was out of time for Barcelona. It is good enough, but it's not really up to my standards. I'm so frustrated with this. Most people probably won't even notice, but I will know, so I will have to come back and fix those tiny things. 
And also I spent half an hour sewing two weeks together to have the black and white uh, hairstyle of Cruella. And it is time for the reveal. And you know what that means? Green screen time! What a senseless thing to do with your life. Um. I must say that's somewhat better news. I adore puppies. <laughs> will happen. <laughs> I've no use for babies. Well, if we make this coat, it would be as if I were wearing your dog. Woof <laughs> woof! <laughs> 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 <laughs>